In this video, we're going to introduce the localized electron model. So here I've shown a three-dimensional molecule. This is methane, CH4, right? So you can see that the carbon atom is in the middle and it has four bonds to the hydrogens on the outside and they're at very specific angles and orientations. The question is, how do we get from knowing the molecular formula for methane, knowing that there is one carbon and four hydrogens, how do we get from that molecular formula and that knowledge of the sh of the uh, the composition of the molecule? How do we get from there to this three dimensional structure? Well, the localized electron model is what builds the gap. And this is what we're going to be talking about in the, really the first three units of this course are the different pieces of the localized electron model. So there are really three components to the localized electron model. And the first one is you want to describe the valence electron arrangement using a Lewis structure, right? So uh, based on the composition of your molecule, there's going to be a certain amount of valence electrons that will be involved in the bonding, right? So remember uh, going back to our discussion in the previous class about valence electrons, valence electrons are the ones that are going to be involved in bonding. And so the first piece to getting any sort of insight into the molecular structure is knowing how many valence electrons are going to be involved in the bonding and what's going to be their arrangement in the molecular framework. And so that's the first piece to this localized electron model. Figure out how many valence electrons you got, figure out where they're going to be, right? And that's what the main purpose of Lewis structures are, which we'll talk about and introduce in a second. The second piece of the localized electron model is to predict the three-dimensional geometry using something called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory or VESPER theory. Now, the three-dimensional geometry is very important. Uh, every molecule is going to dip, uh, orient itself differently in three-dimensional space, but we can use that Lewis structure and this VESPER theory concept in order to predict what that three-dimensional structure is actually going to look like. So why does methane have this exact three-dimensional structure? It's because of VESPER theory. That's gonna be what we'll talk about in unit two. Then in unit three, we're going to describe how the atomic orbitals of each of these atoms change when they get into the molecular environment, right? So some of them are gonna be involved in the sharing of electrons, making covalent bonds, the others are going to be holding what's known as lone pair electrons, which these are paired electrons that are not involved in a chemical bond. So basically looking at the atomic orbitals that are involved and how they change in the molecular framework. Now, all of this stuff is based on what we know about a molecule. A molecule is just a collection of atoms. And so really what you're trying to do is just describe how the atomic, how the electrons in the atom and how their orbitals change when they get into this molecular framework, right? On the assumption that the electrons are localized on each individual atom and they just modify slightly when they get involved in a molecule, right? Now, very important to building Lewis structures, very important to understanding bonding and molecules in general is something known as the octet rule. And in fact, I'm going to put octet in quotes here because we're going to run into a bunch of exceptions to this um, almost immediately. But uh, basically what the octet rule is, is just um, looking at how we form stable compounds. So stable compounds are formed when a molecule fills all of its valence shells, right? So stable molecules. are formed when atoms fill their valence shells. Now, for most cases, that's going to mean that the atom will have eight electrons in its valence shell, right? It's trying to fill up the 2s and the 2p or the 3s and the 3p, right? So on and so forth, right? It's trying to fill that valence shell, which can hold eight electrons in total. Now, like I said, we're going to come into a bunch of different exceptions to this octet rule. So don't, you know, hold on to this word octet as pure gospel. We're going to run into different exceptions. We'll explain each of those cases when we run across them. 
Okay, so let's look at Lewis structures um, in general, what they are, what they look like, what are the different components, right? So Lewis structures. And keep in mind, they're very important, these Lewis structures, because you can't predict the three-dimensional geometry if you don't know the Lewis structure, period. You won't be able to predict anything about the three-dimensional structure if you don't know the Lewis structure. And you won't be able to describe how the atomic orbitals change if you don't know the Lewis structure. So the Lewis structure really is the bedrock of this localized electron model. Without the Lewis structure, you really can't do much else. So what exactly is a Lewis structure? So let's, let's look at the Cl2 molecule. So the chlorine molecule, right? So what I'm gonna do first is draw, we know that this is gonna have two chlorine atoms involved, right? Cl2, so this is two chlorine atoms. And we know that chlorine has seven valence electrons, right? So go back and review, chlorine is gonna have seven valence electrons. What we can do is, is draw what we call a Lewis dot symbol. So basically I'm gonna draw the chlorine, write the chlorine atomic symbol, and I'm just gonna put seven dots around chlorine here, right? So those are my seven dots around chlorine, right? So this is called a Lewis dot symbol. This is just the chlorine atom with seven valence electrons. Right, and then I'm gonna draw another chlorine atom here and draw its Lewis dot symbol as well, right? Chlorine with seven valence electrons, right? So now why do these chlorine atoms want to bond together? Well, when they're isolated by themselves, they don't have a full valence shell. They don't have a full octet, right? This chlorine atom just needs one more electron in order to fill its octet. And this chlorine atom just needs one more electron to fill its octet. So in order to satisfy that octet rule, right, in order to fill their valence shell and to become more stable, what they're gonna do is share, each, of, each one is gonna share an electron with the other, right? So if we think about this as these two chlorine atoms coming together, right, we'll have the chlorine atom from the left here, right, sharing its one electron, and we'll have the chlorine atom from the right sharing its one electron, right? So now we have what's known as a bonded electron pair. We formed a covalent bond. Remember that a covalent bond is just the sharing of electrons. So these two atoms have shared these electrons. So this is gonna be a bonded electron pair. And all of the electrons that are still localized on the individual atoms, but not involved in a bond, are gonna be called lone pairs. Right, so you can remember this lone, like lonely, right? They're not bonded with anything. They're not interacting with anything on any other atoms in the molecule. They're just lone pairs, lone pairs of electrons that are outside of the atom. They're still gonna be very important in determining the three-dimensional geometry and the orbitals. So they're important, but they're just not involved in any bonding. So, okay, so we have this bonded pair. Now, what we do in a Lewis structure, right? We note that both have filled their octet, right? If we, if we look at both of them, they both, each atom has eight electrons around it. If you count the bonded pair in the valence shell of both, uh, both of these atoms, right? So what we do in Lewis structures is that we denote that bonded pair as a dash line, right? So that dash line represents a bonded pair of electrons. And then what you do from there is you fill in all of the lone pairs that are on each individual atom. Right, so this would be a proper Lewis structure for the Cl2 molecule. We've included the dash that represents the bonded pair of electrons, and we have all of the lone pair electrons uh, signified on each individual atom. Each atom is going to have three lone pairs of electrons, right? So both of them have a full octet. We have a uh, Lewis structure representation 
of CL2. Now, diatomics are super easy. That's why I started out with this as the first example of a Lewis structure. It's going to get more complicated from here, but this is the basics. A proper Lewis structure is going to show where the bonded pairs are via these dashes and show the lone pairs via these dots. So just, just to kind of drive that point home, right? If I were to draw CL2 like this and say, this is the full Lewis structure of CL2, it is not right? You must include the dashes and the lone pairs. You have to indicate those bonds and the lone pairs. If you don't have the lone pairs, it's not a full Lewis dot structure, right? So, okay. So that's just an introduction to the localized electron model and a first really easy example of Lewis structures. In the next few videos, we'll go through more involved examples of Lewis structures and some problem solving strategies of how to figure out the Lewis structure for any molecule.